Can you put your hands together for the Lord today? Hey, has he been good to anybody this weekend? I know he has, because that's the kind of God that we serve. He's better to us than what we deserve. He loves us when we don't reciprocate that love sometimes. When we run, he's never far behind. That's the kind of God that we serve. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful that that's the kind of God that we have the privilege of serving. And it is so good to see everybody today. It's Sunday morning. It's my favorite day of the week. You know why it's my favorite day of the week? I say it every week. Because I get to be in God's house with God's people. And there's something special when God's people get together and they lift up the name that is above every name. You, you, can't, you can't manufacture it. You can't, you can't get it anywhere else. There's just something that happens when, and it doesn't have to be in the walls of a church. You could, it could be at a park. But when God's people get together and lift up the name of Jesus... It's amazing what can happen and what can take place. And so I hope that you've walked in the room today with high faith. I hope you've come today expecting the Lord to allow you to walk out of here maybe a little bit different than the way that you walked in. I hope that you've walked in with an open heart. I hope that you've walked in with an open mind. I hope you've walked in with a, a posture that says, Lord, whatever you want to do in me, I'm open. We're not here today to check a religious box. We're here today because you are worthy of all of our praises. That's why we're here. And so we are going to jump into the word of God. We've got an amazing fall season planned for you. There is so much stuff going on. Life groups, things that bring you community and hope and healing. The Glow Women's Gathering. You're not going to want to miss that. I mean, there's just... It's going to be an amazing fall, so make sure you're up to date on everything that's going on. But we're going to launch into a, a new series starting today, and before I really get into the weeds of where we're going, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page, because um, it will, it, it's kind of, you have to know this to know why we're talking about what we're talking about for the next several weeks, but as a church, we, we believe that there is a, a process, a journey that is vital to every, every person that walks in the door. It's the journey and the process that we want you to take if you are a part of Christian Life Austin. And here's the process. The, the first part of the process is we believe that you need to know God. Really, Pastor? Yes, yes, yes. I know. But it starts with with knowing God, and the beauty of it is, is that God wants to know you. He wants a relationship with you, a vibrant relationship with you. Not just religion, he wants a, a relationship with you. And the vehicle that, that we use as a church for that would be our Sunday and our Wednesday services. It would be our Tuesday night young adult service, our, our Wednesday night student service, our Sunday and Wednesday children's services. We need to know God. And every time we join together in an environment like this and in God's house, it's an opportunity for somebody who is far from God to know God in a real and a tangible way. So that's the first part of the process is we got to know God. And once we know God, here, here's the second step on that journey. We've got to find freedom. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're from. I don't care what your name is. You need freedom Amen. from something. Amen. No, I don't. Yes, you do. That's the thing you need freedom from right there. How many of you know that you can, you can be out of Egypt, but Egypt can still be in you? Yeah. And so we need to find freedom, and the vehicle that we use for finding freedom is, is multifaceted, but obviously it can happen in a moment, and it can happen on a Sunday or a Wednesday. You can find freedom. The Lord can deliver you, but we also believe that freedom comes through groups, through life groups. We can learn, and, and as you just saw on the life group video that we have conversations. The Bible talks about confessing one to another. Yes. 
and talking about the issues in life that you're dealing with. And so we find freedom in life groups. We find freedom in freedom groups. Once we know God, we need to find freedom. And then once we find freedom, the third part of this journey that we want everybody to be taking is this, is that you got to discover your purpose. You got to know why you are here. Like you were created than just to go more than to just kind of wake up and ooh, cup of coffee, go to work, come home, turn on the TV, eat dinner, go to bed, get up and do it. That you were created for more than that. You got to know what your purpose is. Why am I here? And the vehicle that we try to help facilitate you finding your purpose is what we call growth track. Every Sunday during our second service, we have a class that's called growth track. And we walk through all the, you take some tests, you kind of figure out spiritual giftings and where God is calling you and, and where you can plug in. Growth track happens every single Sunday. We believe that you need to discover your purpose. And then once you discover your purpose, once you know, who this is where my passions are, this is where my giftings are and my talents are and what God has blessed me with, once you know what that is, then the next part of this journey is that you gotta make a difference in the lives of others. You don't just hold on to what you have, now you take that step and you go make a difference in somebody else's life. And we try to give you an opportunity to do that through serving, we try to give you, will that be through the local church or in the community or uh, abroad, whatever that looks like, making a difference in somebody else. Can I tell you, you will never have more joy in your life than when you are making a difference in somebody else's life. When you do something that blesses somebody else, it does something on the inside of you that you can't really describe. You're smiling and you don't know why you're smiling. Woo, why, why, why am I so happy? It was just a door that I held open. Yeah, I know, but I feel good because I just made a difference for somebody. It's amazing how it works. So know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference in the lives of other people. And so now that we have this foundation set and you kind of understand the journey that we were trying to take people on every week, today I want to really for the next three weeks, I just kind of felt the Lord leading me to one of these to kind of break it down and... Um, really, it would be the third portion of this, discovering my purpose. And I wonder if anybody's ever asked this question, and, and the, what I love about this is you can't say no. I knew the answer to this question before. I, I'm asking you, have you ever asked this question? Everybody just go ahead and do this. It doesn't matter if you're 12 in the room today. It doesn't matter if you're 78 in the room today. Some of you, as the older you get, the more you're asking this question. And here's the question. Why am I here? What am I supposed to do? Why am I placed on this earth? Without question, everybody in this room, this has crossed your mind at some point in time in your life. And again, to reiterate what I said a moment ago, you were put on this earth for more than just going through the motions. You were put on this earth more than just to waste time and to use resources and to, to just live for yourself. God made you for a far bigger purpose than just you. But I like me. And I like living for my purpose. And I've got good news for you. Listen, have fun doing that. But at some point, that's not going to become fun anymore. At some point, you're going to lose the joy and you're going to become frustrated. And when you start wondering, why am I frustrated? Why do I have no joy? It's because you don't know your purpose. And because you've been living for you. And God says, listen, I, I've created you. The reason there's a void because you've been living for you when I created you to not live for you. And that's the reason that you're, you're not happy. You have a greater mission and a plan for your life. And this is what is called your purpose. This is your purpose. Before you were even born, before you were a, a twinkle in your parents' eyes. God had already planned 
some good things for you to accomplish with your life. And the problem is so many of us will go through life never discovering our purpose. And if you don't ever discover your purpose, then you can't live out your purpose. And so you find yourself going through decades of life just drifting, always searching. There has to be more. Always with a a certain amount of discontentment. You're never happy. You just, ah, ah, just, ah, woo, antsy, anxious. Understanding God's purpose for your life is the thing that gives your life meaning. It's the thing that fires you up in the morning. Ooh, wow. Ah. Do you ever do that sometimes? Do you ever wake up and you're, maybe not like that. That was weird. I'm sorry. But in your own way, like you have that, that just, ooh, I'm ready for this day. Let's go. Like, hopefully you have something in you that just drives you. And if you do, you know that you're right smack dab in the middle of the will of God. If you don't know your purpose, then your life lacks the fullest of meaning. If you don't know your purpose, it also means that you're not using all the talents that God has blessed you with. And the reason that God has blessed you with all the talents and all the abilities that he's blessed you with is so that you can use those to live out your God-given purpose. Not to just hoard them and say, look at me. (laughs) No, 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 that's not why he's blessed you with all of those. And in in fact, the Bible has, has so much to say on this topic, and we'll start in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, where it says this, for we are God's masterpiece. Somebody needs to hear that today. You are God's masterpiece. You, me, yeah, you. But nobody likes me. God kind of thinks you're a big deal. You're his masterpiece. He shaped you unique. Nobody is exactly like you. And the Bible goes on to say he has created us anew in Christ Jesus. Why? Here, this is key. So that we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. God made each one of us how we are and who we are. And in Christ Jesus, he wants us to accomplish the good work that he's already planned for you. Which means he's got a plan and a purpose for your life. There's something on this earth that you're called to do. And the good works is called your purpose. He created you. He formed you. He put you on this planet to do the good works in which he planned in advance. You mean, he really thinks that much of me? Yeah. He thinks a lot of you that he already planned good things for you to do. But all I can do is bad things. Good news, God's got more in store for your life. All I do is make the wrong choice. I got good news for you. He's got something better in store for you. Before you were even, but you don't know the family that I was born into. You're right, I don't know that. But before you were born into that family, he had plans and purposes for good works for your life. That's the kind of God that we serve. Look how Paul says it in Acts chapter 20, verse 24. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. What he's saying is the most important thing that I can do is to live out my God-given purpose. This is the greatest thing that I can do. I really believe that after making the decision to follow Jesus, that one of the most important things that a believer can do is to walk out their God-given purpose. It gives meaning to your life. And so for the next several weeks, we're going to take a look at what it means, what purpose means. Finding my purpose. We're going to look at a very small book of the Bible and we're going to follow 
the life of a character who, without question, 99.9% of people in this room will have at least heard the name of this character. You may not know the details of his story, but you will have heard the name. You will have heard bits and pieces of it. And if you're in the room today and you say, you know what, once I tell you his name, I don't have a clue who he is, guess what? After the next several weeks, you're gonna know him real well. So it doesn't matter where you are. We're gonna, we're gonna, and here's what I know. This is crazy. We're gonna walk through this story, and some of you have read this story a thousand times, but you will never read it the same again. You're going to see how much this story has everything to do with purpose. And I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna blow your mind a little bit because it blew mine. Jonah chapter one, verses one through two. The Lord the Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and announce my judgment against it. Oh, that sounds fun. Because I have seen how wicked its people are. The Lord gave this message to Jonah. The Lord gave this message to Jonah Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. Now, what I want to do for the remainder of our time together today is give you what I call markers of purpose. Markers of purpose. Things that that you can start to, if you're looking to find your purpose, I want to give you some ways that you can find your purpose. Is that okay with everybody? And then the next couple of weeks, we're really going to dive into, oh, maybe I lost my purpose. Oh, maybe I need to refine the purpose that God has for me and realign my life with God's plans and purposes for my life. But here's the first marker of purpose as you read that. Did you notice who gave Jonah the message? The Lord gave this message to Jonah. So here's the first marker for your purpose. Your purpose always comes from the Lord. Your purpose doesn't come from a spouse. Your purpose doesn't come from a coworker. Your purpose doesn't come from a, a prophet on TV. Your, your purpose doesn't come from your pastor. Your purpose doesn't come from an influencer on social media. Can I say that one more time? Your your purpose doesn't come from an influencer on social media. Your purpose comes from God. God gives you your purpose. Stop taking cues from so many other people that don't have the ability or the authority to give you your purpose. He created you. We are his masterpiece. He's planned good things for us to do a long time ago, which means this too. We have to be in relationship with him. We have to know God. Because if I'm not in relationship with him, then how am I going to know the good plans and the good works that he's calling me to do? Because if I'm in relationship with you, I can hear your voice. And I know your, if I'm in relationship with you, you know his nudgings and you know his whispers. You can hear his whispers above the noise and the background noise in the room. You can be walking in the mall or where or through your, the halls of your school and the Lord can whisper and there's a lot of conversations going on. But when you're in relationship with him, you know that you know. Whoa, whoa, okay, Lord, speak, Lord. I know that's from you. I know what I just felt was from you. So we have to be in relationship with studying his word is incredibly vital. It's not, this is not just a book that sits on our coffee table at home and collects dust and, and rings from coffee and water and the condom. This, this is vital because God can speak through his word. 
It can be revealed through his written word. God speaks in so many different ways through whispers and dreams and visions, but none of it, none of it will contradict his written word. The first marker is, comes from God. If you're trying to find it, you, you got to find it in God. You can't find it in a bar. You can't find it in a club. Boom, boom, boom. But God, but no. That also used to be my truck when I was 16. Boom, boom. The second marker of purpose, if you're, if you're on a journey to discover your God-given purpose, here's the second thing that you have to know that we see, and it's found in the, in the second verse of that passage. We've already read it. The Lord told Jonah to get up and go. Your God-given purpose will require a get up and go, not a stay still and sit. When God calls you to it, it's going to require you getting up from where you are and saying, all right, Lord, I trust you. Here we go. I'm going to walk if I don't see it. I'm going to walk if I don't understand it. The purpose that God is calling you to will require a get up and go. The purpose that God is calling you to may require leaving a life of comfort for something unknown. The thing that God is calling you to may take a moment to get where God is calling you to. But I want it overnight. If, when I, whew, God, you call me to it. I want it tomorrow. I want to walk in. See, d- did you know that you can't rush the plans and the purposes of God? Did you, did you realize that Nineveh was some 500 to 600 miles from where Jonah lived? There were no planes There were no cars. It was like a donkey and a camel. It's going to take a while to get where God is calling him to be. So just because it's taking a little while doesn't mean God's not doing it and what he's called you to isn't right. You have to understand that. But it does require you to get up and go, not sit there and wait and say, Lord, bring it on. There's actually... A third marker of purpose hidden in the second verse. And it says this, remember it said to go to the great city of Nineveh and announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked the people are. Nineveh was the capital city of Assyria, which were the number one enemies of Israel. So what he told him is, listen, Jonah, go to the people that don't like you And quite frankly, you don't like them and go warn them that my judgment is coming. Uh, That's not what I signed up for, Lord. First problem, Jonah, your purpose doesn't come from you. When you sign up for the Lord, you sign up for his plans and his purposes. So here's the third marker of purpose. Your God-given purpose will somehow, we've already said it, make a difference in the lives of others. He was, he was called to go warn people. Now, it, they may not like it, but it doesn't mean that it's untrue. And your purpose may not directly involve people, but it will somehow always help people. That's the way that God works. God loves people, if you didn't know that. God loves people that don't look like you, act like you, talk like you. God loves people that some of us church people would never give a chance, that we would look right. God loves all people. God loves people that you don't like. God loves people that on social media you just want to lay into them because you don't agree with what they're posting. And I don't know who's right, but he loves both of you. God loves your enemies, and you better be grateful for that because God loves you too. He loves people. Verse three, but Jonah, but Jonah, (laughs) Jonah, 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 got up and went in the opposite direction 
to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and he went on board hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. Did you see this? Sometimes your purpose might intimidate you. It might scare you. What causes people to run in the opposite direction? Just this morning, y'all, I got a dog, so I'm going to have a thousand dog illustrations now. (laughs) Just this morning, early, it was dark outside. I was up early. I wish I could tell you I was praying. I was not. I was taking the dog out early. I'm like, go potty, go potty. You know, talking to them like they're my infant. (laughs) And a neighbor's dog through the fence, and our little Wrigley, she took, she ran, there's no way, I, right to the back door, shoo, and she was so scared. What causes us to run? Fear causes us to run. Your purpose can be intimidating. What God has called you to do, because it's bigger than you, can be intimidating from time to time. Don't be scared of what God is calling you to. If he's calling you to it, it should be bigger than you. If he's calling you to it, it's going to require him to accomplish it. Let's continue. He bought a ticket and he went on board. He bought a ticket. He bought a ticket. Oh, that's why this is good. He bought a ticket. There's always a price to pay when you run from God. I don't want to go do it. It ain't going to be good. I know you're scared to go approach your enemies who God has called you to, but nah, it ain't going to be good if you run from God either. And we're gonna, I got I to gotta move quick, so we got to keep going. Y'all got to get to brunch. I'm sorry. Here we go. Here, here, here's, here's the fifth one. Verse four, but the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm. By the way, You fight storms that you were never meant to fight when you run from the purpose that God has for you. And these storms, the Bible says, threaten to break the ship apart. It's amazing. When you run from God, other people get hurt too. I got to read. Let's keep going. Stay with me here. Verse 5, fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted, to their gods for help, and they threw the cargo overboard to lighten the ship. But all of this time, Jonah was sound asleep. I love it. He said, man, I'm out. So the captain went down after him. But how can you sleep at a time like this, he shouted. Get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will pay attention to us and spare our lives. Then the crew cast lots to see which of them had offered uh, the gods, or had, had offended the gods and caused the terrible storm. When they did this, the lots identified Jonah as the culprit. Why has this awful storm come down on us, they demanded. Who are you? What is your line of work? What country are you from? What is your nationality? I mean, they just, they ran ran him through it. And Jonah said, I'm a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. And the sailors were terrified when they heard this, for he had already told them he was running away from the Lord. And they said, why did you do it, they groaned. I mean, there's groaning now. And since, well, this is, this, is, this is big, the storm was getting worse all the time. They asked him, what should we do to stop this storm? Throw me into the sea, Jonah said, and it will become calm again. I know that this is a terrible storm and it's all my fault. The storm was getting worse all the time. Here's another marker. The longer you run, the worse the storm gets. But so often, we're just like the sailors on the boat. Watch. Instead, the sailors rowed even harder to get the ship to the land. Rowing even harder, trying even harder won't help. Your own strength is going to fail. You're going to get exhausted, and you're going to get tired. They just couldn't make it. Verse 14, then they cried out to the Lord, Jonah's God. Oh, Lord, they pleaded. Don't make us die for this man's sin, and don't hold us responsible for his death. Oh, Lord, you have sent this storm upon him for his own good reasons. How many of you ever said that? Don't, don't, don't say that. 
Then the sailors picked Jonah up and they threw him into the raging sea. Watch, and what happens? And the storm stopped at once. When you start pursuing your purpose, circumstances start changing. When, when you stop running and you start pursuing, things around you start to change. The sailors, verse 16, were awestruck by the Lord's great power. And they offered him a sacrifice and vowed to serve him. Here, here's, here's another marker of purpose. I love this. When you get your purpose right, the lost will be found. When you start walking in the calling and the plans that God has for you, it's amazing how lost people become found people. Why? Because God's got a bigger plan for your life, bigger than just you. Your plan for, his plan for your life was never just about you. It's always about other people. Your story involves others. When you get your purpose right, the lost become found. But my purpose doesn't matter. Oh, oh, oh yes, it does. There's somebody in this world that is far from the Lord that is counting on you to get your purpose right. Your purpose is vital. Finding what God is calling you to and leading you to is vital. My life doesn't matter. Oh, your life matters more than you can begin to imagine. Verse 17, now the Lord had arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah. I'm about done. The Lord had arranged, let me read, the Lord had arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. Here's, here's the last thing I want you to understand. That God's grace is on display in your life when you embrace your purpose. They threw Jonah overboard. Deuces, Jonah, you're out, bro. We don't care about you. What we care about is this storm stopping so we don't lose our life. So, oh, see ya, you're overboard. And the Lord, the Lord in his grace and his mercy had arranged, he set it up for a fish. <laughs> Even when you've been running from your purpose, the moment that you turn and say, Lord, I'm all yours, whatever you're calling me to do, I'm all in. His grace is sufficient for you. He's got so much grace and mercy for you. He's just waiting on you to say, Lord, I trust you. I'm tired of living for my own life, and I want to live a life that impacts the people around me. I want to live a life that's bigger than me. I want to live it out. I don't want to just think it. I want to know it and walk it out. God's grace is on display in your life. Would you stand with me all across the room today? Markers, markers of purpose. God's got a plan for your life. God's got a purpose for your life. You were created to make kingdom impact, eternal impact. Don't lose focus. Don't, don't lose your mission. God's calling you to something greater than just a selfish life of what can I get out of this life? What, what can this life do for me? How much can I acquire? How much happiness can I have? He's got a plan for your life. Man, what a powerful, powerful service. My prayer and my hope is that it changed your life. I know God was moving and he was speaking to you through it. Hey, on behalf of our pastoral team and our leadership team, we just wanna thank you again for worshiping with us this morning at Christian Life Austin Online. 
We pray that this service remains in your heart and helps lead you to your next steps on your faith journey. And we wanna take a moment right now to give you the opportunity to give your life to Jesus. If you've never made that decision before in your life, whether you're in your living room right now or you're traveling, I know that Jesus will meet you wherever you are. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You want salvation today? It is that simple. All you have to do is say with your tongue that Jesus Christ is Lord and also believe in your heart, truly believe that God raised him from the dead. Let's take a moment and let's pray together. I'm gonna pray a prayer and maybe you wanna pray a very similar prayer to what I'm gonna pray, but let's pray together right now. God, we love you and we thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the gift of salvation given through Jesus. We believe that Jesus is Lord and we also believe that you, God, you raised Jesus from the dead. And God, we receive and we accept your salvation. We thank you for all you do for us. In your name we pray, amen and amen. Wow. Well, congratulations to everyone who made that decision. I'm so proud of you. And I want you to know that all of heaven is celebrating with you right now in this very moment. And we at Christian Life Austin are also celebrating with you as well. But hey, we know that this is only step one on the journey. We want you to know that you are not alone and we don't even expect for you to figure this whole thing out on your own. We wanna partner with you as we walk through our core values. Know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference in the lives of others. We would love to help you take your next step. Whether it's water baptism, joining a life group, or getting plugged in and serving through Growth Track, we have everything you need to make this process easy. And we wanna walk alongside you as you take your next step. We want you to know that you're valued here at Christian Life Austin, and you're valued in the kingdom of heaven. Hey, we wanna know what your next step is. And we wanna know if you made the decision to follow Jesus today. So please click the link in the description so we can get connected with you. Again, thank you so much for worshiping with us here today at Christian Life Austin. And we can't wait to see you soon.